camshaft insulation here today on my 350 small block Chevy. So uh, this camshaft I picked out is from Comp Cams. It's a, what do they call it, the Nostalgia 300 horsepower cam. Now this is actually kind of a lower lift. You see 426 intake, 420 exhaust. Um, you know, for me, for my application, that's going to work great because I took Vortec stock Vortec heads. I'm going to put these the, them on, and so that'll work with the stock springs and everything. Um, you can see I'm partway through installing it. Um, I still need to go into the box there and get the, uh, the lube for it, but um, basically I... I just put oil on the cam bearings here, two of them, and I'm just resting it for now because I don't have a clean workspace, so I just put it in the engine because the engine's clean. So uh, I'm going to go through the, putting the camshaft in and doing the degreeing on it just to make sure that that's right. So scratch that on my applying the lifter lube because it did not come in the box. I double checked and the instructions say that there are some supplied. I know the last time I bought a cam from Comp Cams, I had it supplied, but in this case it didn't. I'm going to give them a call tomorrow. But for now, doing my degreeing, I'm going to use oil. And that'll be just fine just for doing this. And then um, once I get the cam degreed, I can pull it back, back out. Um, honestly, probably clean it again. That way the, the lifter lube can stick really well and put the lifter lube back on it. So it's an extra step for me, but still going to get it done. Still get the same end result, so that's what matters. All right, so as far as lining up the camshaft, first, uh, there's usually on a, one of these aftermarket kits, there's usually three marks. So you can see there are different holes all the way around this cam gear where you can put that key into. There's three different holes. Uh, one is round, one is uh, triangular, and one is square. The square would be, I believe that would be, uh, the square and the triangle are advanced or retarded by four degrees, and the circle would be the stock. So that's where I started with. I'm starting the stock. So right there now, I'm gonna try to. I'll have to put the gear, the chain on yet, but basically I'm trying to match this circle up to this circle here. And again, if I was using the square, I'd be marking it up with the square and the triangle. I'd be marking the triangle up to this dot here. So here we got it. I have my timing marks lined up, timing chain on. Yes, I know I only have two bolts in there. I can't find the third right now. I'll have to get some, but you can see that chain. It's pretty tight. There's still a little bit of play in it, obviously. Um, I would just be way too tight, but I'll, um, basically the next step, uh, I need to get my degree wheel on, onto this, onto the end of the crank, get that tightened down, and then I'll need to put a a stop on the number one cylinder here so those are my next steps so with my degree wheel on literally does not matter <clears throat> what angle you're at basically what I'm trying to do right now is I'm going to try and find true top dead center um, obviously it looks like I'm very close to top dead center but I'm going to find the true top dead center in the means of degrees so to do that, I'm going to put my piston stop on and basically drive the engine forward into the piston stop, back it around, back into the piston stop, and then that uh, amount of degrees I have, I'm going to divide that distance by two and then wherever that's at, take my piston stop off, that's true top dead center. I'll explain it a little bit better as I go. Here's my piston stop. Basically what I'm looking for is that it's going to be tight and in place so if you look at where this is at it's obviously not in the center um, i don't want to accidentally hit this stop right here on one of the ridges of the piston i want to get more like right here in a solid spot it's repeatable for sure so <clears throat> basically that's why i have it like that and now i drive the engine well, let's go backwards first because it's closer So right there, this popped up a little bit. So that tells me that my piston stop moved. That's not gonna work, I need to tighten that down. Okay, now 
you can see, and there you see that I'm hitting on my piston stop. Go to check my degrees. Focus there. Looks like I'm right on 43 degrees right there. So now, get to crank the engine over the other way. This is also a good idea to have a really big, let's say a breaker bar instead of a ratchet. Gives you a little bit more control over this. You can see I'm hitting there. And I'd say it's right at about 11 and a half degrees for me, the way I'm looking at it from the center. So um, <clears throat> now I can do a little bit of math and find true top dead center. All right, gonna try to go through my math here with you. So if we're trying to finding top dead center, we turned it one way, we were at 43 degrees. The other way we were at 11 and a half. So you add those two together, average them out, or add those two together and you get 54.5, average them out, 27.25. So basically what that's telling me is that from this wheel's position right now at 27.25 degrees is top dead center. So I can take my piston stop off. That is tight. Uh, and then I'll crank it over to 27.25 and that'll be top dead center. All right, so word of recommendation again, get a big ratchet or breaker bar to do this. I was using this tiny ratchet, it was terrible. Probably went back and forth like six times, but I got myself a 27 and a half, or 27.25 degrees. So now I can loosen up my degree wheel here. So, I redid this quick. Um, my math kind of led up a couple degrees different. It was about a degree and a half difference from what I had when I had a loose sprocket. So that just kind of shows you how bad that is. Basically now, I'm gonna loosen up my cam gear and put it at zero. Because we are at a measured value of true Top dead center. So now you can see, yeah, it does look like it's at top dead center, but we know now that that's true because we calculated it out based on where the top dead center value is. So we're at a true zero degrees right now. Okay, so what I'm going to do here now is basically I'm going to try to find uh, the intake center lines. If you look at the 108 degrees intake center line. So so what we're going to do here is we're going to find the intake center line of this cam. So the way that you do that is you find on the intake stroke the maximum lift and then the intake center line is 50 degrees on 50 degrees of camshaft on either side of the intake. So, first step is you just turn it over. Basically, I'm just waiting until that dial stops going up. Okay, we're pretty close there. I'm gonna set my zero there. So I'm setting my zero there. Now I'm gonna continue going clockwise to see if it goes any higher. And then I'm going to go back counterclockwise and come back to it and see if I missed any point, any part. So there I'm going back down, I'm going to go back counterclockwise and come back. That, now obviously each lifter does have a dwell point, so it kind of comes up to that zero and then just stays there. So I'll try to show that. But... Oh, here I'm at zero. So now I got that marked. This is locked in. What I'm going to do is then go 
50 thousandths either way so um, on both on both sides of the lobe lift so right now the lobes at maximum lift and so on the 50 thousandths down 50 thousandths before it comes up to the max I'll take the readings from the degree wheel and see what our degrees are and just verify that we're at that um, 108 degrees of the intake center line. Alright, so see I'm at my 50 degrees there. So now I come over to my degree wheel and I check this and I'm seeing 154 degrees. So I'm going to make that measurement. And that was when I went clockwise. So um, I'm going to have to go back to the other side. Uh, we were on the way down actually, so I need to go back and then bring it back to coming up onto the lobe. Now see, this is kind of a fight here, but I'm trying to always go clockwise when I'm taking measurements because that's the way that the engine's going to be turning. Um, that just kind of accounts for the slop in the timing chain. You see, there's always a little bit of movement, even when it's new, but this way the engine's turning over clockwise, so that's why I'm making my measurements clockwise so that it's in relation to how the engine would actually be running. But this is a tough measurement to make, that's why I got the breaker bar out, and so you just gotta fight it. And see, I went past 50 there, so now I'm gonna go back behind it and then come back to it again clockwise. I'm going to take two hands and get this right here, but you can see what I'm getting at. Okay, and now here you see that my 50 thousandths. So, come over here to my degree wheel, and I'm reading at about 62 degrees. So, I'm going to take that measurement, do a little bit of math, and see where I'm at. So, here's what I got. I did, the first measurement we got was 154 degrees. Second measurement was 62 degrees, and so then you add these up, divide by two, and that's the middle point between those. So we added them up, and I got 216. You can check my mouth math, I just did it in my head. Divide by two, and I got 108. So then when I come back and I check the cam card, intake center line should be 108. So that's exactly where we want to be at. So using the stock markings, that's exactly how, it, how I wanted it to be at. So I know now that my camshaft is installed at the correct point using the stock markings. So I can now go ahead with continuing on the build. I'm going to put my heads on and get everything else assembled here.